good afternoon everyone this is vrishali in my last lectures we discuss about complete overview of rs232 protocol and also we discuss about some important points of previous unit with practical demonstration i have mentioned the complete playlist of processor architecture in below description box now in this session we will learn the next point that is complete overview of i2c that is inter integrated circuit protocol so let's see we will discuss following points in this session that is about i2c protocol their terminologies working steps working with examples advantages and disadvantages so let's see one by one the first point is about i2c protocol basically i2c stands for inter integrated circuit and this protocol was designed by philips the concept of i2c protocol is see on same circuit board there was multiple components was reside and it is necessary to perform easiest communication between all these components so i2c protocol support for easiest communication between all the other components that was placed or reside on same circuit board we already discussed the concept of master and slave in previous lectures just consider that your processor is work as a master and you can connect different other devices like printer scanner keyboard mouse to your cpu right so this all the other components work as a slave so this is the concept of master and slave so i2c protocol perform communication between multiple slaves to single master and multiple masters with multiple slave so they can easiest perform easiest communication between multiple slaves to multiple masters I2C protocol supports serial communication protocols. We already discussed serial communication versus parallel communication protocols in last lecture. So here I2C protocol supports serial communication protocol because they send bit by bit data in serial format. The next thing is I2C protocol also called as two wire communication protocol because for performing communication between master and slave it required only two wires. so that's why it is also called as two wire communication protocol now see here in this below images uh, there is one master and multiple slaves are connected to the master by using two wires on the another images again there is a i2c controller that is your master and multiple peripheral devices like analog to digital converter lcd then sensors these slave devices are connected to the master by using this two wire sda and scl so that's why this is two wire communication protocol so this is just introduction about i2c protocol the next point is i2c terminology the performing easiest communication between master and slave i2c protocol required different terminologies see here in this diagram there is master and slave in both master and slave there was component sda and scl so here sda stands for serial data so serial data provide or send data from master to slave and again from slave to master that's why this both direction wire present here so this is the work of sda to send and receive data between master and slave in through this single wire the next one is scl that is serial clock signal so this serial clock signal carry clock signals or carry clock bit by bits data while performing sending and receiving data because every communication required a particular time limit or particular clock signals so this clock signals carry this scl component and this clock signals always controlled by the master right so see here there are two wires are there one is sda and another one is scl one is for sending and receiving data using serial communication protocol or in bit by bit format and another one is scl that is serial clock signal they provide clock signal for this sending and receiving data purpose so these these are the different terminologies used in master and slave i2c protocol communication next the next point is working steps of i2c protocol so sending data or receiving data between master and slave i2c protocol perform these six steps i will explain these six steps in detail in next slide you just focus on this step the first one is start condition see here in this uh, image 
that is SDA and SCL. This is your data that is master to slave and clock signals from master to slave. The first one is a start condition that is uh, see here SDA goes to high to low and after that SCL goes to high to low. This is your start condition. After that address master send address to the slave acknowledgement bits sending and receiving data then again acknowledgement bits and stop condition. So these are the steps are performed by using I2C protocols communication. So I will explain in detail. Now see here in this working of I2C protocols. The first step is start condition that is SDA and SCL when send data master to a slave SDA goes to high to low and after that SCL goes to high to low. So this is your start condition, right? Next one is address frame. So what is address frame? See here master send data to the slave. So data means data frame. The same particular data frame means 8 bits of data frame is there. So this is your data frame. See here first one is a start condition then address frame. So basically address frame means address of slave. See suppose there is a one processor and there are total three printers are connected to that CPU. Okay printer one printer two and printer three and suppose this CPU want to send data to printer three right. So this is the address of printer three or this is the address of slave devices right. The next one is read write bit. So read operation means to perform sending data or requesting data. So this bit denote whether micro, uh, master is perform read data or write data. Then acknowledgement bits. Next is 8 bits of data. See here master sends 8 bits of data to the slave. So this is your data frame 1. After receiving data slave again send acknowledgement bit. Then again master send 8 bits of data. Again slave send acknowledgement bits in this way. So after receiving complete data last one is a stop condition. See here in a stop condition stop condition always goes to low to high. First SDA goes to low to high and after STL goes to high, low to high. So this is your stop condition. Okay. So these steps are performed in this I2C protocol communication. So I will explain these steps with examples. Okay. Now see here. This is I2C protocol communication steps. The first step is master and slave devices. See here there is one master and multiple slaves are there that is slave 1, 2 and 3. So this is the first structure of I2C protocol communication. Now the next step is check address of slave. See this master want to send data to slave 3 only. Okay. But there are total 3 slave slaves are present. So this master send address that is this is your address 1. 11010 okay this is the address so they send address to the particular slave so this address match with the slave 3 right so at that time this slave 3 received those address and remaining slave 1 and slave 2 is disconnected from the master so this is your second step master send address of slave to the particular slave the third step is when address is match with the slave so slave send acknowledgement signal to the master okay because it means that slave 3 is ready to receive data from the master okay. So this is the acknowledgement bit see here one bit is low. So slave send acknowledgement bit to the master means the address is match and I am ready to receive the data. Next step is after getting acknowledgement from the slave master send data to the slave in the format of data frames see here. Uh, slave 1 and slave 2 is by default disconnected already disconnected right. So master send data to slave 3 see here they send in 010 format they send data to slave 3. Now next step is after receiving data from master slave 3 again send acknowledgement signal to the master means your data is completely received right. So they send acknowledgement signal again to the master. Now next step is stop process. If complete, complete data is sent at the end there is a stop process. So stop process means it goes to low to high all the SDA and SCL signals. So this is a complete working steps of I2C protocols communication. Now the next point is advantages and disadvantages of I2C. See as we discussed in 
advantages of i2c's are in i2c more than one master devices can be used in circuit right so this is a one main advantages as compared to spi uart rs232 protocol there is more than one masters are used next i2c protocol required two wire communication it required only two wires that's why it's very uh, smaller and less expensive to design pcb then uh, the addressing is very simple because master know the address of each and every slave and uh, addition of any extra device is very easy if there is a uh, total three slaves devices are connected to the master so you can easily add or remove other devices in from that particular circuit and it's very easy to perform diagnosis and debugging in i2c protocol communication the next point is disadvantages of i2c protocol so the main disadvantages is the hardware complexity increases because there are multiple masters and multiple slaves are there that's why sometimes it's very uh, complicated to design the circuit next disadvantage is i2c protocol is a half duplex mode of communication and the third disadvantage is this protocol is managed by software stack this means that master having multiple slave me multiple task and multiple functionalities are there so all this multiple task are stored into the stack as per their priority wise so master give the response to each and every stack or each and every task as per the priority that's why this protocol is managed by software stack so these are the different advantages and disadvantages of i2c protocol hope so you understood about each and every uh, working steps of i2c protocols communication thank you keep watching keep learning